the week with Ben Ellis. This is Switch. Thousands of people have backed an appeal to save Breast Cancer Haven, which has helped dozens of patients and their families cope with the disease. The charity's Alton Visitor Centre opened only in 2017, supported by two and a half million pounds of government funding. But the charity announced last week that it was closing this centre in response to financial pressures caused by COVID-19. More than 5,000 people have now signed a petition urging the organisation to reconsider its decision to shut the premises. Deborah Douglas from Borough Group Support or Support Group joins me on the line right now. Uh, Deborah, it, it, very disappointing news. This. It's, it's really devastating to breast cancer patients locally. Um, it was recognised in 2017 um, that the cancer centre was needed. In fact, in 2015, the government approached Haven and they wanted the money invested in the West Midlands. So they gave them actually 2.65 million. And that money um, was specifically for support in this area. So we're, we're very devastated about, it, about the whole news. And no warning, you say? There was absolutely no consultation, no warning. Uh, the first notice we got was a general notification that was put out by the CEO of Haven, Sally Hall, uh, which basically said, uh, you know, due to COVID, cutting funding, they had to, had to make some tough decisions, and um, they were closing uh, Haven, Sally Hall. So that's the first we heard. Uh, obviously, yeah, very disappointing news. And, and it's just another example and we, we we talk about this a lot on on, on this show uh, a couple of weeks ago we talked about people who um whose treatments for things like gambling addictions were were ceasing due to covid-19 this this is a, another example of that isn't it and it's it's the knock on effect of, of of this pandemic um it is it's absolutely affecting it's affecting our sports you know our charities been going since 2001 and and i think we don't have any overhead best friends early on are, they're all volunteers, so I guess in, in that respect we don't feel it as hard, but obviously we're affected because we can't go out and fundraise, um, and, and we're in the same boat. But for a massive charity compared to ours, uh, Breast Cancer Haven, to close without warning, we um, forge links with the charity, we fundraise, and in fact our charity spent £20,000 giving uh, Haven a kitchen so we gave them £20,000, and that is a year's money for us that would fund help us helping all our local you know, ladies in a practical way. Um, however, we haven't got things like Reiki specialists, counsellors, etc., etc. And what we did in our group was we were happy to signpost ladies to the Haven so they could get the professional help they needed. I see. How, how do you feel about the, the idea that, or not the idea, but the, the fact that it's happening, that um, something as, as serious as uh, breast cancer is, is just being pushed to one side because of, of, of what's going on in, in, in the here and now? Coronavirus uh, may disappear depending on, on who you believe, but, but at the moment, things like breast cancer aren't going anywhere. Absolutely, and I mean, treatments have been affected. Um, you know, as far as we're concerned, the breast cancer patients, um, there's a massive recall right now happening uh, in the NHS and Spire of the patients. Uh, roughly 6,000 patients within the West Midlands are being recalled. And in fact, uh, 11,000 patients in all, including his general surgery patients between the NHS and Spire are being recalled. We've got no support at all for breast cancer in, in that respect. There are other charities out there for us locally in this area, the West Midlands, um, we were able to tap into the Haven, um, you know, we were able to go visit, have a cup of tea, uh, um, meet other breast cancer patients. Our own charity can't do that now because of COVID. We would have a monthly meeting um, and in fact we're trying our first Zoom call at the moment. Um, so we're trying to do that as, as far as making connections with our own um, members. So at the moment they're not getting that um, support that they need uh, apologies if, if you've already answered this because uh, if my mind's wandered like, like i said i do apologize but if if the center only opened uh, three years ago what was what, what were the terms under which it opened in terms of how long it was initially supposed to be around for 
So we were told um, before it opened, actually, in 2017, we were involved from the very beginning. I, in fact, had a, um, a personal visit to my house from this, the then CEO of Haven, Pam Healy, um, and she practically begged me, she pleaded with me to get involved. She knew that I'd got connections with breast cancer patients locally. Um, at that time, my daughter had just been diagnosed with um, Hodgkin's lymphoma, so was going through cancer treatment. But frankly, she didn't take no for an answer. She said, we really need you on our committee. And I gave up that time, um, not only to help Breast Cancer Soli Hall, which I've been involved in since I was diagnosed in 2003, um, but I also helped with the home because I could see the benefits of breast cancer patients. Um, and what happened then down the line, you know, we were promised, we got the centre, we loved the centre, and, and as a charity then, as I say, a small local charity, we funded a kitchen and then we would signpost our ladies to the haven. I, I so, see. Yeah, no longer. The social group was supposed to be there for good. We wouldn't have paid £20,000, which is a, a year's uh, funding for us. We wouldn't have put that into a, a, a you know, a, a centre that we thought would close in less than three years. No, exactly. Has there been um, any political um, response from this? I mean, we've we've seen there were 5,000 signatures on, on a petition to keep it open, but if we, we look back at the publicity from when it opened, the West Midlands Mayor Andy Street was involved uh, in, the open, in the opening, the, uh, the Lord Mayor of Sully Hull, I think, at the time as, as well. Has, have there been any, any support from, from those kind of areas for you? Um, certainly, um, that's what we're doing. We're writing to our local MPs. Um, I'm, I'm going to, to write again to, um, to Parliament, to, to the Department of Health and Social Care, on a regular monthly call with them anyway, because um, as part of the Patterson uh, review, we're trying to push through the Patterson review findings because there are still 15 outstanding. But as part of that, as I say, it was recognised that this area, um, this area alone in the whole country, there's never been a recall like it of breast cancer patients. It's unprecedented because of the road uh, surgeon Ian Patterson. So for us, um, you know, I'm following that route. I'm speaking to the uh, Department of Health and Social Care on Monday and I should be bringing up the fact that this centre is going from the area and, and what have we got to replace it? You know, and, and why was that money spent anyway in this area? It was funded for this area. Why should it go back to London, essentially? Um, now, I've been told, I spoke to the CEO of Haven, I've been told that it's not going to fund a new centre. Uh, however, that money is going into the, in, into uh, into London, and it's going to the central fund when that house is sold. Right. The government paid for that essentially. So why should that money leave that this leave the West Midlands? Absolutely, I, I hear what you're saying there, and it's frustrating as well. Uh, we're, we're talking politically that uh, Parliament is in its recess because it's the kind of thing you could imagine uh, MP for uh, Solihull, Hall, Julian Knight, standing up in Parliament yeah, and saying... Yeah, I've written to him, he's actually um, on holiday at the moment, yeah. uh, I understand. We've written to a number of local MPs that, you, you know, were interested parties, particularly Julian Knight, um, and Mary's and MPs, etc. So, yeah, we're hoping to get some feedback from them, but as you say, Parliament's in recess, but yeah, they should be up in arms about it. Yeah, so you know, I want to stand from Parliament. Um, yeah. I've got, you know, I've got a statement that was because it was so, even even um, the Haven CEO of Haven is saying to me, we had two point five million. No, I did. No, you didn't. You had two point six five million. There's a statement that tells tells me that out there, um, and, and it basically says because that money would go to the West Midlands. Right. Okay. Um, well, just finally, before we let you go, um, like we said, there's a petition out there, but but this this can be your opportunity to put it forward. Your your plea uh, to keep breast cancer haven open. Absolutely. Um, the petition's online. It's under my name, Deborah Douglas, uh, Change dot org. Um, as many signatures as possible. There's over five thousand already. It was only um, raised a few days ago, last week, I think. So. Please sign it um, and support the West Midlands and support care for breast cancer patients locally. And we certainly wish you the best of luck with that. Deborah Douglas, thank you very much indeed for joining us on the show. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. More great videos from the week. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. It's down here somewhere. 
And don't forget, you can catch us on the radio every Sunday between 12 and 2 on FM across Birmingham 107.5, on mobile, on DAB and online. We're made for Birmingham. This is Switch Radio. <laughs>